All right, guys, let's do a little bit of spin review footage. I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it goes without saying now that you've seen a lot of this. And I think it's, it's one of my favorite things to do is to go watch it back and see it happen. You know, we've got these cool camera angles. It's really cool to go back and review this footage and slow it down and watch it from a different angle. I think, you know, there's probably never been a time that you've watched the spin from the top or if you've watched a trainer really break down their own footage of them doing it themselves. And I think this is, uh, you know, part of what makes this course so cool. And so I love doing it. Let's, uh, let's take a little bit of time to actually watch this horse. This is Max. You know, he's going to turn here for us. We're going to do, you know, a lot more hip out shoulder in. You're going to see that, that theme come back many, many times over. Keeping that horse straight to making sure that he drives up from behind is super important. Oh, dude, I got in so much trouble last night because, of course, I sent it out and then I went to sing, right? Singing with the orchestra. So I, I worked till seven last night and then I went to town for rehearsal and I'm standing there in the lineup with everyone singing and I'm also texting you and texting Darren and working on this. <laughs> and the conductor goes, is that your boyfriend? And I said, no, it's not. But if it was, I could like, I mean, you're single. So, you know, I could probably send his number on to you. Well, I thought the place was going to die. The whole place cracked up laughing. Like I just handed it straight back to her. She's like, what are you doing? Texting your boyfriend? I said, no, it's not my boyfriend. But I said, if you're looking for one, I can send you his number. It was awesome. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> the place just about died. So I love Max. You know, he's he's really cool. He's he's a really good turning horse. You've seen him in a lot of, uh, you know, the reels building up to this. I think by the time you get here, you've probably seen this horse turn. You're going to see how much I spend time just moving his feet, you know. I keep my hands really, you know, kind of his shoulder width. And you'll notice how I pick up that outside hand all the time. All I'm doing is picking up that outside hand and making sure that his right front leg follows my right hand. So you'll watch every time I pick up that hand that he just has to pick up that shoulder and move his right front leg around. Now I'm going to pick up the trot. And it's the same thing. You know, you'll see my left leg's back and I'm pushing him out a little bit, but I'm really focused on the outside of this horse. When I pick up that right hand there, he has to come away from that right rein. Because when we get to the spin, you know, we're going to ask that horse to actually you know, come off of that outside rein. When you pick up and push on that horse, you know, in the circle, or when you pick up your hand, he has to come away from the outside rein so that you can turn him one-handed, you know? So here we are, you know, pushing him out a little bit. I think in this clip, you're gonna see him hop around a little bit. This is a horse that he's really light in the front end. He's really good with his feet, but sometimes as you drive him up underneath there a little bit, he gets a little anxious and it's entirely normal but you have to stay patient. You gotta stay the, the, I don't know if I've said that before. You have to stay the mature one in the relationship, you know? And then once his feet feel good, you can see how I keep my hands off of his neck. I'm not gonna drag my hands across. He should turn that way without too much stimuli. You don't wanna have your hand way over to the left and you know, both legs on him and trying to get him to turn you know, at, a, at a high rate of speed for nothing. I try to use as little as possible. And then obviously there I stood, just pet on him, look at the wall. You know, it's one thing about making sure that they take that deep breath and chill in between things. Otherwise, you get them really bound up and they start to think that all they have to do is work. And you can cause a lot of anxiety there. So we'll go the other way here. Same rules apply. You'll see me push that hip out, lift that shoulder in, push that hip out, lift that shoulder in. Now we're going to ask him to turn this way. And you see my hand's not going four inches to the right. You know, it's, it's just turning a little bit there. I want him to come off the weight of that rein. That was a really good turn. And then we sit. You know, we just chill, ask him the other way, start slow, ask him to move his feet. If he falls apart, he loses his rhythm at any point there, he kind of hops around in the back and you see, I'm not dissatisfied with that, but you can see him kind of lose his back end rhythm a little to the left, you know? So let's see, I, I, I think we're going to pick up on him and just move him again and make sure his shoulders and his hips stay straight, make sure he pays attention. You can see how much time I spend there just setting him up. We'll turn him here the other direction, see what he's got for the right turn. There's a lot of, you know, just be patient in between and wait. You know, make sure that he really, you know, takes the time to just stop his feet. Yeah. Yeah, see, I knew I was going to go back there because I didn't like that left turn. So I was pretty sure that we'd go back to that left turn and just push that hip out and lift the shoulder in. More left leg. And you see there he wants to hop a little bit. He'd rather not trot. That's one thing about him. He's a good loper and he can lope almost on the spot. Like he's a really good slow loper. And he has, to, I mean, he's super soft in his face. You don't have to pull on him that much, but he does need to have a good trot rhythm when you do this. Then we're gonna stop again, set him up for success. Just ask him like we're at the horse show. Now you see the difference in that back end. 
he's really hunkered down underneath there a little bit and he just stayed better in the hind end and that's you know a lot because you're driving that left leg up underneath you're driving that left leg up to his right shoulder you know and that just keeps him really straight and really lifted and if you drive that left leg up underneath and you take that outside front leg away from that outside rein now when you go to turn him your inside hind legs driven up underneath and he comes really clean off your outside rein and then he should stay straight and he should turn really good you know and so that's kind of the the, the basis of where that hip out shoulder in comes from all the time you know it's just making sure that he's really driving that inside hind leg up underneath your saddle and making sure that he comes clean off that outside rein so that you don't get too much bend in the spin or too much of him leaning against your outside leg or not respecting your rein where you got to drag him across and, and pull him with your hand and uh, you know that's what we're doing there you can see again how long I've sat there I think it's really good to sit there and just chill we'll ask him back to the right here and see what we got that's really good you know he elevates a little bit in the bridle there maybe but I mean this horse is pretty cool what you'll find if they lose that rhythm you know if they really start to struggle if you don't feel like that turn is good that's where you back up go back to that hip out shoulder in exercise go and push them around the cones or just imagine those cones are there and really make sure that you have that super fluid you know you, you don't want to have a lot of resistance in that exercise and get to the spin first if you get to the spin and you still have resistance in those previous exercises you need to just back up take a couple bricks out of the out of the wall and go back to the foundation go back to the basics you know take the wall down a little bit and rebuild that base a bit and come back and put those bricks back in there and see if it's a little steadier and that's just the 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 classic you know pendulum of of horse training you know that, that it's going to swing a little this direction then you're going to swing back a little bit and go back over here and then it's going to be more consistent and you'll swing back this way and you'll find that you go back and forth like that every week every day you know sometimes by the hour uh, so don't get too hung up on the turn on the maneuver itself uh, we've said that many times you know you've got to stay away from the maneuvers a little bit because when you get to the horse show that's all you have and you can get them a little anxious in the maneuver if you just work on that maneuver we all run into it I, I'm no saint trust me I, I get hung up on things I get mentally focused or, or you know really really intense on something and it's very very easy to do I'm I'm as guilty of that as anybody else but really make sure that you take the time and you're mentally mature enough to step back from what it is that you're trying to get and go back to the foundation and make sure that that base is really good and you don't have a sticky spot there before you try to really screw up the spin by making it happen in the turn you know i think it's something to say and it's something to remind yourself you know you can go through this course and you can watch these videos in 20 minutes you, you watch an exercise happen in 20 minutes 25 minutes maybe the longer ones are 30 and 40 minutes but really I mean keep it in perspective that this is weeks and weeks of chipping away that's something that you know I, I talk about here at home a lot just chip away at the problem chip away at the resistance chip away at, and the idea is that today you chip a little off tomorrow you chip a little more off and there's there's no rushing it there's no magic you know time is a very cruel but fair judge time will always tell if the horse is going to be a really good spinner time will tell you're not going to make it into something it's not you just have to chip away day out day in day out all the time to make sure that you just put those basics in and and remember that this is us shooting video with good horses and with horses that do struggle a little bit but they're here in training they're five days a week we work them all the time you aren't going to get those results in the 20 minutes that the video runs you know and that's something to really make sure that you remember that this is weeks and months of work you know be really amazing by this time next year you know uh, that's that's like any athletic sport, uh, any bodybuilding, anything. You know, you, that's a long-term goal, and you got to stay committed to getting those basics right, so that you don't get frustrated because you can't create it in 20 minutes or 30 minutes, like you see in the video. Welcome to my life. You know, if I was watching this thing 15 years ago and watching somebody do this, I'd have done exactly that. And I'm thankful for the good horses that put up with me. Because, man, every time I saw a new thing at the horse show or at the trainers or something, I'd go straight home and I'd get on my old gelding and I'd teach him all the new things I'd learned. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't think you can get away from that. I think that's just the nature of what it is to be enthusiastic about something I want to do it. But, boy, I mean, that old horse put up with a lot of awful, terrible stuff that I was trying to... I didn't know how to do it, but I was going to go home and teach him how to do it, you know? And, oh, man. So, yeah, there's, there's that honest you know take your time relax remember that that horse has to learn the new concepts that you have in your head as well as you have to learn them you know so yeah it's 
it's really good to be patient, be mature. All right, guys, this is my favorite thing. I love going through this in slow motion. So we're going to start straight off in slow motion here and watch this because you'll see where we were talking about just getting started, picking up that outside rein, making sure that that horse's feet follow. And you'll see right there, you know, where, where that, that right hand picks up and that horse brings that right foot around and then I release it just that easy. I'm going to put my hands down and reset my reins and let that horse walk a little bit. And it's really cool. We'll just continue here slow motion watch because I'm going to see I'll gather that rein up again, pick up that right rein. You'll see how I'm really making sure that he comes away from that outside rein, how his right leg has to follow my hand. And then I release him. You know, let him step out and draw on him again. So here you can see again, I'm going to run this again in slow motion. I want you to watch that right hand and that right rein. That's what I talk about coming off that outside rein. As I pick up that right rein and draw it towards my left shoulder, it's really light, but you can see how he had to come with that right foot away from it. And there I've already put my hands down, opened my fingers and let that horse go. And that's something with feel. You'll see, we'll pick up that right hand, you know, just a little, close my fingers there just enough. There my hands closed. I pick up that, touch his neck there. You can see where he comes away from that and moves there to the left. And that's something about feel. You see, if you've got your arms set and you can take horse, take, and you can take hold of that horse in, in a solid kind of smooth way, then when he gives to the bridle, opening and closing your fingers is really all the give and take that he needs. You don't need to draw your elbows back to, you know, back past your hips at that point, right? So you can watch my hand there as I set him up. Every time I put my hands down, let him go but I'm gonna close my fingers and take hold of that horse and ask him to come back to me. And then the release that he gets is not my whole arm, it's actually just my fingers opening, you know, my ring finger, my middle finger, my, you know, as you open that up, that's enough release for him. So that's something, you know, as you just watch this horse one step at a time in this slow motion, watch how my hands come up. And we'll see here in a second as we pick up the trot, it's kind of the same deal. I'm going to just let him go really, really frame by frame. And as my fingers close, that should be enough to take hold of his face, you know? So let's just watch and see here. There, I'm going to draw my hands over towards my left shoulder. And you'll see my fingers close and make a fist there. You know, and that should be almost enough to pick that horse up and bring him off that, off that shoulder. And you can just see the rhythm. You can see where that left leg is on. You see where that right leg is forward. You know, we're pushing that hip out, making sure that he doesn't throw that shoulder to the outside. He's got to keep that right shoulder in. Now you see pretty good rhythm there, frame by frame, step by step. You can see all that motion that helps him get soft and get relaxed into this maneuver. And you can see as I pick my hand up, I close my fingers right there and I just drive that horse up. And then as soon as he moves, you see he moves there, brings that right foot up, then I'm gonna put my arms down, open my fingers, let my hands go again. And it's again, we come back to that conversation of my left legs pushing that hip out, but I'm not dug in and, and held there. You know, watch that left spur there, kind of push on him and let go, and push on him and let go, and push on him and let go. In the rhythm of his feet, I'm talking to him with my legs and with my hands. And we'll pause it right there because you can really see, you know, how much the, the hands and legs and everything works together to really make sure that you get what you need. You can see where my elbows are, you know, and where that left leg is there. And you can actually see where that hip has kind of got behind. You can see where I'm going to have to use a little more of the left rein, left leg, you know, to get that hip to step over. Because you can see right there where his shoulders have straightened out, but that left hind leg is stuck behind. So I've just paused it here and you can see, you know, if we put some arrows there, you can see where, you know, as we've talked before with that single cone exercise and moving that horse's hip around, this is similar to that idea, you know, and you can see where I had to take more left rein. I had to go left rein, left leg and really kind of catch that hip up because he's just leaned on my leg a little bit. And so, you know, he's not driving that left hind leg up under where I need him to be. I've widened my hands. You can see how my, my hands are quite a bit wider and I'm really still keeping his shoulders between the reins, but I'm gonna push that hip up and really make sure that he gets that hip up there and, and steps up straight. Cause you can see now where he's hung that left leg behind 
and that's going to cause you a problem. He's going to get too bent in the spin, and then he's you know going to lean somewhere or push on you. He really has to drive up and keep his rib cage and his hip straight up underneath and make sure that he stays straight, even though we're traveling on the circle. So we'll let this finish up. You can see how he loses that rhythm. As soon as I picked up on him there, he kind of loses his rhythm and, and falls apart. And so we'll just let this roll there. I opened up, let him be again. And we're getting closer. Every time he pushes that hip out and he gets a little straighter and he steps up and really uses his hind end and gets himself figured out, I put my hand down and let him travel straight. Give him that release, let him go straight. Let's see, we're getting pretty close to where I'll ask him to turn. There we go, see that? So now you can see from the top where I'm gonna keep my hands off of him and I'm actually not gonna put any leg on this horse or put any rein on this horse in that turn. So we'll, we'll stop it right there because you can see really, really cool in that frame. You can see where my hands and my legs are actually off of that horse really square. I'm not, uh, I'm not asking him, you know, with my hands way over to the left. Let's roll that the rest of the way through. And you see him finish that stop and, and hang out. And, you know, again, it's that really important to put your hand down and chill on him. But he's got to be between the reins. Like, you know, if you're using your rein to drag that horse around, then he needs to come off your leg more. And if you're using your leg to grind him around, then he's got to come off your rein more. You know, like you got to make sure that all those cues are light. And so you have to drive there. You have to push on him. You have to develop that desire, you know, to make sure that he can push himself up there and be light and move his rib cage off your leg and move his shoulders off your reins and make sure that everything's right here. We'll ask him to turn again. Yeah, that's really pretty. You see how he's committed. He's got that right hind leg up underneath him. He shuts off really square. He didn't run anywhere or push anywhere. I really like the look of that. So that's super, super cool. Uh, and, and that's the way it should look, you know, but you've got to go back to you know the hip out shoulder in make sure you drive that horse around make sure that you really get him up underneath and, and between your legs so that when you do turn him he stays balanced and straight and doesn't lean one way or travel the other so hopefully that makes sense hopefully you guys can see that i think it's a really good angle for for watching how the turn works and uh, it's pretty fun let's talk a little bit now about how we like start the horse and shut the horse off and how you get him to turn forward and shut off really square you know i think that's a, another conversation in the spin that's really important to talk about so here you can see it paused. I've got my hand right in the middle, right over his main line. We're gonna watch this in slow motion now and we're gonna talk a little bit about starting the spin and stopping the spin. I think it's really important to be patient as your hand slides across. Don't go all the way to their face. Don't move your hand quickly. You know, start that rein. As that rein starts to slide up their neck, they should start to move their feet to catch up. I think that it's really important to be careful that you don't put your leg on too early and goose them out of that turn. You know, you run the risk of them jumping out or, you know, leaping around you know it's something that happens that they know they got to turn fast and if you start fast then they start faster and you get into those problems so i think it's very important that you start your hand very slow if that horse doesn't start to move his feet off the rein then go back out of there go back to work put the effort in make sure that you've got him really shoulder in before you come back and ask for that turn again. But as you slide that rein, he should start to move his shoulders. He should start to bring his shoulders in to get underneath your hand. And so if you have to go further than, you know, three, four inches, the direction you wanna turn, that's where I would take him back out, put him back to work, make sure that his hip is out and his shoulder is in to, to make sure that he's really committed to that outside rein when you start to move it. So let's watch this now. And we'll just start it real here, frame by frame, slow motion. See there, my hand starts to slide really slow, comes off, you know, it's about that far. And then we're going to see him there. See, there goes his neck. My hand doesn't go any further now. The instant he commits to it, that's as far as I want to go with my hand. You see that? And I'm actually going to see if I can't put my hand a little closer to the middle. But I want to stay real committed there and make sure my hand doesn't go any further than that. You see how my hand's actually back in the middle now, slow motion. Can really see that from the top down keeping really straight i'm looking just off his inside ear you know just as a turn 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 now i'm going to spot that landing so you're going to see now i start to get ahead with my head i'm going to look i'm going to spot that landing and i'm going to catch that horse up to me so let's back that up a second you guys watch that in slow motion i'm going to back that up a second to where we where we spot that landing and i think that's a really big thing you can see where that spin changes as I get to, you know, three and a half, and I'm gonna say, okay, it's, you know, I'm at three and a half, this is where I'm gonna turn. You're letting that horse know with your body position, I'm ahead, and I'm gonna spot that landing, and then I'm just gonna let you catch up to me. And that's a really important thing for stopping them good. You know, if you're looking down and turning and counting to four, you're gonna get there and probably overturn or underturn because you didn't tell your horse. 
And so this is how I get one to stop really square, you know, and make sure they shut off really good. I've shown lots of horses don't shut off really good, or I've shown lots of horses that shut off really good at home and go to the horse show and overturn. It's, it's part of the game, that's, that's what happens. But let's watch that now as we run that back a second time in slow motion and just pay attention to where my hand, my shoulders, and my hat are. The hat is really the telltale in this clip. So let's run that now. You can see I've got to, you know, there goes my head, there go my shoulders, I'm ahead a little bit, and then I let that horse catch up to me. Does that make sense to you guys? You see how that works? I let that horse catch up to where I want him to be, but I've got ahead of him, and I've, like in any sport, I've spotted that landing and made sure that I know where I need to be. Where are my judges? Where do I need to be? Once my hand goes in the middle, and once my legs go back on either side of that horse, I've really essentially just let him catch up to me. So, you know, that, that should make a lot of sense to you. That's how you spot a landing. That's how you get one stopped really good is make sure that you're ahead of that horse a little bit, find your landing and get there and then let that horse's body catch up to you. So hopefully you enjoy that. I think that's, that's one of the biggest things about getting one turned four times and getting them shut off good is making sure that you get ahead of them in the shutdown. So here we go, this is another angle of the, of the spin. And again, we're gonna talk about starting and stopping. I had an old guy tell me one time, and I've always thought about this, and I think it's really, really, really important. And uh, you know, I it's reiterate it for you guys again. The hardest part of reigning is the start and the stop. And you are welcome to tell me if I'm wrong, because I, 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 can't, I can't think of any better way, simpler way to say it. The hardest part is the start and the stop. In every maneuver, in every transition, the beginning and the ending, the start and the stop are the hardest parts. And so if you can conquer the start of your spin and the stop of your spin, in between, I mean, once you've turned 14 times around, the horse starts to turn pretty good or six times or whatever. But if you can't start the horse clean and shut him off clean in four spins, it doesn't matter how fast he turns after 20 revolutions, you know, none of that matters. Let's, let's watch the start in this clip. I think this is really cool. And we're going to see the same thing where the leg comes off, the hand goes that direction, and the patience and take the time. So here, let's let this roll while I'll talk about it. Take the time to open up that leg there. There goes that right leg. You see that go off there. Let's watch how this horse reacts. There goes his eyeball. There goes his body. My hand picks up and slides. Out. That's really fun to watch that there. You know, you just pick up and talk to that horse. And just from that motion of the rein, there he goes in that turn. It's not my left leg. I'm not kicking a hole in him. You can see really clearly there where the, the rein's gone across and both legs are off. You see the sunlight there? Now, you can put your leg on to help him with that rhythm a little bit if he needs it. But, you know, if he should turn at this speed without you digging a hole in him, that horse should just be committed to that turn. And you can really see there he is super, super, super committed. He's over that right leg and he's going to, you know, he's going to lose his balance if we turn him too hard. And there we've got him right to the middle and stop him square. You can see how my hand's gone a little bit over to the left, but as he brings his neck back in the middle, you can see we're standing up real straight. Now, one of the things to talk about as we pause it there, one of the things to talk about there is he's not exactly perfectly straight, but that's not a penalty because you can see with the left front leg, you can still see sunlight between there and the right hind leg, okay? So if we were to get him too far overturned to the right, as soon as you can see sunlight between the outside of the left front leg and the outside of the right hind leg, then, you're, then you've overturned. Typically a judge looking from this perspective will, will use that as his penalty. You know, you've, you've gone past, you've gone with your left shoulder past the right hip. And once you've passed that, then you're out of alignment, then you're too far, then you're overturned. That's your minus half turn penalty. So you typically have like a shoulder's width of the horse before they're gonna give you that penalty. So we're not exactly perfectly straight here. You can see that really clearly, but you can still see that obviously from the judge's perspective, that horse has still got his shoulders in front of his hips. He's not standing out beside there. And so that's a, that's a really important note to make is that when you, when you get that horse turned and when you stop it, you do have you know a fraction of leeway but uh, that's kind of the rule of thumb is that the horse's shoulders haven't gone past his hips and so you haven't rotated into the penalty area. One of the biggest things that I see, you know, that people make mistakes in the spin is typically just starting too quickly, you know, starting too fast, putting too much anxiety into the beginning of the spin. And if that horse doesn't move his feet consistently and commit to what you want, 
you know, then, then you get all kinds of problems. Your hand's too far, you know, the horse gets stuck on the bridle and, and kind of jerks its head to the outside. Or you put your leg on too fast and they jump out of the spin and don't really commit to the direction of the spin and, and the footwork before you, you know, before you put your foot on the gas. So I think a lot of it, you know, comes to the start. You've got to be really, really careful that you start slow. Watch that footage back, watch that slow-mo back and make sure that you really watch where the leg comes off and, and I wait for his head and his neck to look and I, I move my hand as he moves his feet. You know, that, that conversation has to be there with that horse. You have to be willing to be patient. I had a horse one time, it was an interesting conversation. I had a horse one time that, you know, normally I'd ask him with my hand two or three times. He was not the fastest mental horse. You know, he's very quiet, very thick. Nothing really ever rattled his chain. And I for sure have times where I showed that horse in the spin and I'd pick my hand up and move it one inch to the right and I, or left, whichever. And I can tell you, he just didn't feel like he'd mentally fire. So instead of panicking and moving further with my hand, the key was to just relax and ask him a little bit again. You could half put your hand down and you could ask him again. And I, I would sometimes ask two or three times you know, before he would go, oh, well, yeah, we're spinning. Rather than going all the way to my shoulder with my hand and pull the horse around and panic because he didn't move his feet when I asked him instantly, I really could start from that turn. You see, the judge doesn't care how long it takes you to start the spin as long as you're not jerking and pulling and showing the horse, you know, like you've asked him to turn and he's not turning. If your hand moves an inch or two to ask that horse to spin and you kind of put your hand in the middle and reset and put your hand in the middle and reset, that minor adjustment, that minor patience with the horse while he commits to what you're asking him is way better than you panicking with your hand and getting all the way to his face and then pulling him around and pushing with your leg and realizing like you had a really good turn in the warm up and then you've got like a stiff old plank when you go turn him in the pen, you know? So that's, that's one thing I would say is that I've learned over the years that, you know, really teach them to start slow and take their time finding their feet and make sure they commit soft to the start of the spin and then ask for the speed afterwards. So there you have it. I mean, we've talked a lot about the spin. You're gonna see some of the spin exercises, some of the things that we do that, that really help them turn, you know, or find, you know, more foot speed. Uh, what I would say is use that Facebook page. You know, that's, that's a really good thing to post the videos to. I'm gonna do my best to talk with you directly. I mean, that's what I enjoy doing. So don't ever be bashful for posting something. I don't care how bad it looks. Uh, I can tell you, you know, unless it looks bad, you know, you can't make it better. So. You know, that's a, a big thing, like for the money you've spent, uh, use it wisely and make sure you take advantage of all the things and put it out there. No one's gonna judge you for a bad spin. We're only gonna help you make it better. And I think that's, you know, just be humble. Just put it out there. Just, just go learning because that's how we all learn. I mean, here's the deal. For this money, you can learn here and you can be humble here and you can show people what you have or what you don't have and we can make it better. Or you can go to a horse show in front of everybody for a lot more money and find out that it's not good enough, you know? And I always say that in lessons here is just, just put it out there. I wanna see the worst that you've got so that we can really make sure we put the best in there that, that we can put in. And I want you to have the best spin possible before you go to the horse show. Mm -hmm.